Hi everyone, I'm Diane from Creative Wigs. I'm here to talk to you about some tips and tricks for your wigs. First of all today we're going to start with Will the wig make my head itchy? It's a very common question that a lot of people ask and I find that depending on the base of your wig it might be a little bit itchy. For example, if you have a fully hand knotted, a fully machined wig that looks like this on the inside, then potentially the machining might be a little bit itchy. So a good tip that I can recommend for you with that is to get a little bit of fabric softener diluted with water in a spray bottle and just spray that all over the inside of the wefting of the wig and you'll find that that will soften that up very, very easily. Alternatively, you've got lots of options to wear under your wig if it is going to be itchy on your head. If you have no hair, you potentially can wear like a little bamboo wig cap, which will be nice and soft and smooth under the wig and it'll just stay on your head and sit much more comfortably without the irritation. Another option is a little wig cap, a wig grip, which is a band made from a velour fabric that is attached with Velcro at the back. And once that is on your head, the line of the wig sits on there. So it's not going to irritate your head as much once the wig is sitting on the grip. Another question that is asked very often is how much do wigs weigh? Well, you'll find that that will vary depending on the wig that you are purchasing. Wigs are made in different base constructions, different cap constructions, and a fully machine made one will always be a little bit heavier than a hand knotted one. Another thing that will make a difference in the density of your wig or how heavy the wig is, is how much hair is in the wig and how much length you have in the wig. You'll find if it's longer, you'll have more weight in the wig. If it's a thicker hairstyle, you'll find again, you will have more weight in the wig. But the way wigs are made today, they are much more lightweight than they ever have been and really comfortable to wear. So it's a good idea just to have a look around, touch them, feel them and try them on until you find something that is going to be perfect for you. Another question that I'm asked very frequently is how do I know my size of wig? Basically, wigs are made in three different sizes. You have a petite size, you have an average size, and then you have large size. An average size wig, you'll be able to determine the circumference, which you will measure with a tape measure, if you can see this on my beautiful model, around her head and bring it up to the top here. And that will give you an approximate size of the circumference of your head. So this one is 21 inches. An average head size is approximately 21 and a half, 22 inches circumference. The next place that you'll need to measure is approximately from ear to ear. So you're usually looking at approximately about 13 inches from the top of your crown through to the sides where the tops of the ears sit. So approximately that is 13 inches. On this young lady here, she's a little bit smaller. The next one that we're going to measure is from the front of the head, approximately from your hairline, back through to the nape of the neck. And that will give you your final measurement, which will probably be about 14 and a half inches, something like that. So that will be the measurements of an average head size. And I would recommend that you go for something that is fitting you comfortably. Wigs tend to stretch with wear. So you'll find you'll be able to um, either wear a stocking underneath it if it's a little bit loose initially, or if it's a little bit uncomfortable, you've got lots of things, as I mentioned to you earlier, to stop the itching. These things will also help to keep the wig on your head. You have the option of a wig grip, which sits around the circumference of the head. You have a wig cap, which is a stocking that can be worn underneath the wig, and that will help to keep it on as well. But basically, you'll find if you have a small head, 
potentially be looking at a petite size for a wig. Otherwise, an average size will fit most people. Hey guys, Joel here from Creative Wigs. Uh, we often get asked about returns um, from online purchases. Um, what's really important to think about when you're first getting a wig for your first time wig wearers um, is to really get the right thing, the right style and wig for you. What I suggest um, before buying online is to go and speak to a professional. We at Creative Wigs pride ourselves on working together with you guys to find the right style and colour that would be perfect for you. Once we've come to that and we've found exactly what it is you need, then it might be easier to go online and then you know your style, you know the colour that you like to wear and you can play around and get exactly what you want. Um, Usually, it depends on companies, however, we at Creative Wigs will usually arrange an exchange if the colour is not right or if it's not sitting right, but everybody is different. So, uh, what I suggest is, for you first time wig wearers, touch base with us, we'll work together and we'll help you find a new look. Good luck and we look forward to seeing you. How do I know if I need a new wig or if it can be repaired? Hi, I'm Andrew from Transitions here. Oftentimes I'm asked, how do I know when it's time to get a new wig or maybe should you get it repaired? Well, for me, it comes down to like three or four fundamental questions that you'd need to ask on this, this question. Firstly, is the hair quality in the wig? Uh, second, is hair loss in the wig? Uh, thirdly, is the base or the wig cap, what's the quality of that like? Going back to that, hair quality, first point. Um, if the hair itself has lost its luster and its life, uh, you can't style it the way it once used to because it has no elasticity in it or no strength in it, um, it's probably good to not get it repaired, to get a new one. Secondly, if you've got extensive hair loss in the wig, uh, that's you've got patches or even like alopecia in the wig, um, if there's a lot of that going on, it'd be very costly to add new hair into it and possibly it'd be better value to get yourself a new wig rather than spending more money on that old wig. The third thing is the base quality as well, or the wig cap itself. After wearing the wig for many years or many, many months, you'll find that the materials, the fabrics that are using it will wear out. They will get thinner and finer. They won't be as strong as what they once used to. The wig cap itself will go out of shape. It'll lose its elasticity. It won't fit the way it once used to. All those things are hard to repair in a wig, and it might mean that it's better to get a new one rather than to get it repaired. Are there wigs for men? Hi, I'm Andrew from Transitions Hair. There are so many different types of wigs for men. Broadly speaking, there are two categories. The first one is one that covers the top of the head. These are called a hair system. They go from the front to just below the crown and side by side, usually coming in through here at the temples. However, if you have more extensive hair loss, you'll need a full cap wig, um, and that's the more traditional version of the wig because it covers all of the head. It goes from the front all the way through to the crown, that's the, the nape down the back here, and then side by side and just in front of the ears. Now, within both those categories, there are plenty of different types of options. There is human hair and synthetic hair. More are human hair these days. There is lace front ones or ultra thin skin ones, which are really popular. Um, there is you know ones that are more breathable and others that are less breathable. So there are plenty out there in all different shapes and colors and sizes. Uh, and the way in which they're constructed. Get in touch if you want to find out more information. Thank you. There are so many wigs in the world. It's dizzying. You could say that there are three, most broadly speaking, ones that are all hand tied, ones that are uh, all machine made, and others that are mixed with the two. They'll be called um, hybrid wigs, okay? Now within that, there's plenty of different options. There is like lace front ones, non-lace front ones, gripper wigs, non-gripper wigs. There is monotop, silk top, uh, skin top, synthetic hair, human hair. Even within human hair, there's four different varieties of hair that you can realistically choose from. We offer four different collections, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum that reflect the different qualities of the hair. So the big question is then, which is the best one for you? Well, my answer to that is really the one that you feel most comfortable in. That's the most important thing. How would you know which is the right one for you? Well, there are three factors that I always like to consider. First is your hair type. Secondly is the cap um, that it feels comfortable to wear. And thirdly is the size. And then actually here's a bonus one, the security, okay? So four things, all right? So firstly, hair type. As I said, we have four different collections of four different types of hair. 
They can be coarse hair or very fine textured hair. You want to choose one that's, that reflects the hair that you had originally. Okay. Secondly, is you want to have a cap that fits comfortably in your head. It's got to feel um, you know, nice to wear that you're going to enjoy wearing it for you know, a whole day at a time. A big factor of that then is the size. The size itself matters. We offer seven different sizes in one of our ranges. And so that means you want to have something that fits really nicely and it's not going to move around. And that brings me to my fourth point, which is security. Okay. You, when you put the wig on, you got to feel that it's secure, that it's not going to wobble around and it's not going to you know, shift and move through the course of the day that much. And certainly that it's not going to come off the head. So in reflection, hair type, a cap that feels comfortable wear, the size is really important, and then finally security. Find a wig that you feel secure in, and if you have all these you know, beacons lining up at the one time, all those stars aligning, you're going to find that that's the wig that you ultimately will feel more comfortable in. Hi guys, so I just wanted to explain to you how to make your wigs cooler in the summer. So some people think that um, if you wear shorter wigs, it's a bit cooler, and that's that's actually true when you have shorter wigs it's cooler but if let's say you're wearing a long wig like this um, if you take your wig and you put it up like in a ponytail and obviously pulling a little bit of hair down just to make it look natural pulling a little bit of the back down so it's off your neck that will definitely help make your wigs cooler in the summertime the place to get the best quality wigs is to go to us rnz wigs australia our wigs are top quality russian hair and european hair the quality is incredible, um, very lightweight on your head, and our wigs are made specifically for medical wigs. We have wigs for people with alopecia, hair loss, cancer, and hair thinning. Um, and it's very light on your head and very comfortable. Some people think that there are different brands that are good for different size heads, but um, every single brand that I know all have different sizes. So for example, extra small, small, medium, and large. Um, so you really have to see what suits your head the best. Obviously the best thing is to get your head measured, would you measure your head, and then you would see what cap fits the best. So even though it fits you well, it might not be as comfortable. So you gotta see which cap is comfortable. Um, there's caps that are have silicone in it, that, ha that are hand tied, that are wifted, um, that are silk and lace um, base. So the best thing is to get your head measured and to see what cap actually um, fits on your head and and the way it feels that's the most important thing this is how to measure your head um, when you purchase a wig um, either online or in the shop you have to know what size head you are so we know what size cap you are for the wig so usually the sizes are from extra small to extra large and I will show you to how to measure your head so you start with the circumference which is around the head so you start from the front of the head and you go all the way around the head till the top right over here and this is where you stop okay then you do front to nape so you start at the front of your hairline where you want the wig to sit and you go all the way down to the back of the nape of the head which is right over here which is right behind the head right here that's where you do from front to nape and then the next step is going from ear to ear over the head, across the head, so right over here. And then you go over the head from ear to ear, like as if you're wearing like headphones. And then you go behind from ear to ear in the back, which is right over here, from ear to ear. And then the sixth step is just getting your nape, which is right over here. Hi, my name is Martine from Freedom Wigs. I believe that the choice to wear a wig is a deeply personal one and for me it's all about marrying up how I feel on the inside with what I see in the mirror. I lost my hair to alopecia when I was seven and even then I was running that around the house with a tea towel on my head trying to make pigtails so I think that I've always been a girl with hair on the inside. I've been looking after the alopecia community for nearly 20 years now and I've worn all types of caps with all different types of bases but the one that really was a game changer for me was a suction based cap made with medical grade silicon. 
it made me feel safe, it made me feel secure, and I could trust it when I couldn't control my own hair loss. The thing that was so unique about this suction base when I found it was that it was made specifically for my head only. Using this incredible technology, it really was more like a prosthetic than a wig. It was so smooth and comfortable, and it allowed me to forget about my alopecia because I knew it wouldn't come off. So I could swim underwater, I could go on horse riding, go on rides, and I didn't have to worry about the weather. It really did give me back my freedom. To make a freedom wig for you, I need to take a 3D medical scan of your head. That's then emailed to our manufacturers in New Zealand where they create a statue of your head. This is kept on file forever and it becomes the base that your wig is built on. They also create a plastic prototype for us so that I can come and do a fitting in real life and just double check that you've got the perfect suction. They then also create this silicon membrane. This allows heat to transfer and each hair is implanted one at a time. All of this results in this incredible suction. Let me show you how that suction base works. So to take your freedom wig off, you just put your finger in underneath the base, release the air and it peels off. As I mentioned, this is a perfect replica of my head. So when I put it on using two hands, I'm going to press, walk it down and back. Make sure that there isn't any air pockets and then that's the suction. It isn't going anywhere. The maintenance of our wigs, what is required is it's important to clean the base out, the silicon base, as soon as you take it off, to remove all the body oils and the body acids and to help avoid any bacteria or any odour. So that's really important as soon as you take it off at night. When you're brushing the hair, to use a very gentle brush and to brush it gently so that you're not putting any stress or pressure in the hair and to not pull when there's any knots. We also do recommend that you use a good a number, of, we recommend a number of brands of good quality products that don't have any harsh chemicals in the shampoos and conditioners. We recommend that you wash it once a week, at least if you're going swimming or going swimming in a swimming pool or chlorine or in the salt is to wash your hair as soon as you can afterwards because that removes all any harmful things that will help that affect the hair. Also, if you're being out in the garden or doing anything dirty or dusty, we, again, we recommend that you clean the hair so you, the dust doesn't dry the hair out. So we just recommend that you do keep it in as fresh and clean as possible for the longevity of the condition of the hair. Our wigs would generally take three to four months to be made. However, this can change depending on the client's request for hair color and hair length. Um, however, from the time that we generally do the scan, the fitting and the proving the hair sample is generally three to four months on most cases. The benefit of wearing a freedom weave, it does create a self vacuum. So therefore you can do many activities like swimming, dancing, cheerleading, gymnastics, basketball, netball, um, obviously running, any physical activity because it creates a self vacuum. So that's one of the great benefits of wearing a Freedom Week, plus you can pull it up in ponytails and the scalp looks like scalp all over, from the top to the back on the sides. So if you wanna pull your hair up while you're doing your activities or pull it back, it can, you can wear it into a ponytail high, low, and enjoy those activities which you pull off doing before, and especially going swimming with the family or friends, you can join in and blend in just like they are.